Hi guys, uh, thanks for taking the time to click on this link. Um, uh, you're about to see uh, a brief video of our showroom uh, demo wall behind us here. Uh, now, if you come along and see us at some of our exhibitions when we can do them, um, you'll quite often see our demo wall behind us. Um, on this wall, we talk about infrastructure of your home. So it's really important that if you're planning a new build or renovation, um, where you would get a builder, an electrician, an architect involved, you also reach out to a company like us, um, a technologist, someone who can look at your property, um, look at the current trends in the way we lead our lives with technology, and look at what you want from your home, whether that be intelligent lighting, you know, door entry system, you know, or good Wi-Fi across the house. So our wall behind me here is split into three sections. Our first section here is probably our most important section. It looks at first fix and second and fix infrastructure. So it talks about where you, where, you know, the importance of getting the right sockets in the right locations and how we deal with those by you know, centrally locating the, uh, the tail end of the connections. Um, our third bit here talks a little bit about our final fix infrastructure looking at some of the technologies that you're going to have in your house and looking at how we can incorporate those. So, you know, everything's talking to each other. So scenarios can happen, uh, simulated occupancy can happen. And then our middle section here is looking at our intelligent lighting. So uh, that's by where we uh, centralize your lighting system. So rather than you just go into a switch on the wall and that turns on one light in that room, uh, you can go to any switch in any wall in any room and that will turn any light on around the home. You know, meaning that your home works with you, not against you when it comes to you, you know, forgetting that you turned a light off outside or something like that. So first of all, we'll look at our first fix and second fix infrastructure. So obviously when you go uh, out these days, you, you go and buy a TV or you buy a TV from us, um, you know, you're going to have a lot of services on that TV. Um, we're still coming across homes whereby, yeah, the, the main lounge may have a good TV socket in it, but, you know, bedroom two, three and four have just got a single aerial socket. So, you know, when we look at infrastructure, we look at everything to do with things like your standard TV aerials, uh, you know, your satellites. So if you go out this afternoon and buy a TV, um, you know, you've got twin feed satellite on it because there's a good chance you've got a free to air satellite on that TV. You've got aerial on there because, you know, you might just want to use Freeview as well. And you've also got network sockets. So, you know, you're not relying on Wi-Fi for your, you know, 4K Netflix playback. So, you know, anywhere you're going to have a TV or you could have a TV, you should really be putting a smart TV socket, as we call them. So you're getting good connectivity from that, uh, that device. You know, you've paid, you know, let's say a £1,000 for a TV. Let's make sure we're getting £1,000 of services from it. Um, in certain rooms, we might also want network sockets. So these can go with our TV sockets as well if we want to expand the connectivity of our TV, maybe adding it to a control system, maybe returning the audio from the TV to a surround sound system uh, or to a multi-room audio system. Um, we'll also use network sockets where we might have static appliances in our kitchen. You know, you know one of the biggest advents in uh, technology in the TV market has been the connected TV. Actually, one of the biggest benefits about a connected TV is the fact that your TV updates its software automatically most of the time. Um, you know, back in the days when I started out, we had our CRT TVs, you know, you couldn't update it. You couldn't get new services on it. And if you could, someone had to come, you know, pass with a laptop, you know, we're, we're still there talking early noughties to update the firmware on it. So it's the same with our kitchen appliances these days. You know, our appliances are now connected to the network. Um, yeah, we might be able to switch our washing machine on remotely if we've forgotten to, to do it. But also keeping that product relevant, making the manufacturer download software updates to it. So, so that's why you might look at putting network sockets for your appliances. Also where you've got, you know, you've got computers, laptops, you know, things which, you know, almost require a permanent connection to the internet. Um, if we go to our TV audio sockets, um, obviously TVs are great, they're really thin these days, but they do suffer with sound quality, which is one of its downsides. Um, so quite often we want to put a sound bar with our TV or we might want to you know, take our TV into a, a bigger system. So you know, with a TV audio socket, we can return our audio from our TV into a central location, a small AV rack somewhere, let's say, and then return that back to the TV and put it into a proper sound bar or you know, maybe put it into some ceiling speakers. Um, and then lastly, our HDMI sockets. 
Um, if we want to centrally locate, and when I mean by centrally locate, it means not having our boxes under our TV on a stand. You know, we want to get all our boxes. We want to get our amplifiers for our speakers. We want to get our sky boxes, you know, under the stairs or in a rack room, depending on the size of your system. And then, you know, so when you walk into your lounge, you've got a nice TV on the wall. You know, it could be a, a Samsung picture frame TV or it could just be a drop down projector or something like that. But all the gubbins, the kit for it lives in the central location. Um, how we return that, so if that skybox is in that central location to that TV, would have normally been done with you know your network network cable, your Cat6 cable. Um, however, in the previous years, we've we've uh, uh, come across more of the, more um, influx in proactivity of HDMI over fiber optic leads. So quite often now, when we uh, install systems into homes or we pre-wire homes. We will do speaker cable, we'll do coax, we'll do cat cable, uh, category cable, but we'll also do HDMI over fiber optic leads. Um, this way, we can take that skybox, we can split it out into a distribution and take that to multiple rooms or multiple skyboxes to multiple rooms or BT boxes or Virgin boxes or Apple TVs. You know, everything lives centrally, so we can, we can actually see that in any room we want. So, you know, looking at our sockets, we need to think about putting our house these days, us personally. We would do smart TV sockets, we would do network sockets, TV audio sockets, and HDMI sockets. So, great, we've got the cable in the wall, we've got the sockets in the room. So what do we do at the other end? Well, this is where you put a patch panel. So here, for instance, we've got our network sockets, we've got our audio sockets, and we've got our coaxial sockets. This means that you can pre-wire your home um, and use rooms which you might not necessarily be using straight away. Let's say, you know, bedroom three or bedroom four. But one day down the line, you might want to make that an active room. But bringing it all back into a patch panel, it's nice and neat and tidy. Then in front of that patch panel, we can have a nice little AV rack. So we can buy the amps we need them for the speakers. We can you know, buy the skybox for that room or the video for that room, VC, not VCR, I'm going out of date, DVD for that room when we need it. Um, so having it nicely centralized and nice and neat and tidy just means it's all easily you know, accessible in the future bringing me on to multi-room audio you know let's look again our audio systems let's let it get let's you know rather than having a radio sit on the countertop which you know let's face it, it's taking up valuable space these days um, let's get some speakers in the ceiling or on the wall or in the wall or on the floor as floor standers and let's basically um, look at getting those in whilst the house is being built or as the house is being finished so you know let's go back to bedroom three and four you know, it may well be that we don't want that as an active audio room. But actually, to put a couple of speakers in the ceiling, take that connection back to a patch panel isn't that costly. But what it does mean is if someone moves in with you or you decide to use that room as an office in the future, you know, we're working much more from home these days, you know, we can get the amplifier, plug it into our patch panel, and all of a sudden those speakers have become live. If we hadn't preempted or we hadn't thought about doing that at the beginning, that's not possible. You know, it's very hard to get cable in. You know, the most expensive cable we'll ever buy is the one we forget to run. Let's not forget to run it. So, you know, if we forget to run that cable, you're having countertop solutions, you're having, you know, wireless solutions or Bluetooth solutions, things that will work perfectly on their own but won't form part of the system for the house and work over the house's infrastructure and network. Um, bringing me onto network. Wireless access points, really important that we put wireless access points in our houses these days. You know, you guys are probably doing new builds or renovations. You know, you're, you're being encouraged to use uh, materials which are very environmentally friendly, very efficient, you know, foil, black foil, foil backed plasterboards, you know, you know uh, thick insulation in the walls, you know, underfloor heating. These are great and they mean we don't have to run our houses so much, you know, to keep them warm. However, they have really bad detrimental effects to Wi-Fi. So if, you're, if you haven't had a technologist involved in your project and you've just got your router sitting in the hallway and you've got this lovely new house and you know, we've got underfloor heating here and underfloor heating here and the house, the, you know, the room I'm standing in has got, um, has got four back plasterboard around it, then you know, if we then got say like an earthed socket in the wall, power socket, you know, that could have created a Faraday cage, which means that although your socket and your, um, your router is only the other side of that wall, you're now taking your phone out of your pocket and you've not got a great signal on it. So, you know, let's look at the infrastructure of the house. Let's look at the plans. You know, we can, we can uh, give you a, a map of where the best places to put access points are. 
yes, you know, a lot of people don't like access points. You know, some of them can nicely be hidden away in the ceiling. Some of them sit on the ceiling and it's just another bit of kit on the ceiling. So, you know, we can look at maybe putting that access point in bedroom three because it's next to bedroom one. And because we thought about, you know, how powerful the signal is, we can place them around the house discreetly so you get a great signal. So from the minute you walk in the door and actually sometimes the minute you've driven into the driveway, your, your phone's getting the great signal. So, you know, you pull your phone out your pocket, you walk from room to room, you know, you're video conferencing someone or, you, you know, you're talking to mum on the phone. Um, you don't lose that signal. So it's really important if we look at infrastructure to sort of think about how we're going to live in our houses. So, you know, going back to, you know, what what do we want? Where are our services? You know, have we got a home office? You know, have we got, you know, we're putting TVs everywhere. Have we got appliances that might want connected? Getting that infrastructure in the wall as the house is being built or, or you're doing your renovation. And then getting it all nice and tidy, you know, get, keeping it tidy, you know, so even if we do nothing with it, you know, we connect nothing to it, you have the infrastructure on the house going forward. So let's imagine we've got our infrastructure in now. So, you know, we've come in, you know, us personally have designed it for you, hopefully. We've come in and run the first fixed cabling and we've now come back, done the sockets and we've tested the home. We're making sure those wires are working and everything's really good to go. So now we start to look at what we want. So that can be amplifiers in that central location. Um, to work some garden speakers or to work some ceiling speakers. And majority of the time, we've got that connected to a control system. So the advantage about a control system and what you'll see on this wall here is a lot of these things you have on this wall are things that we either have on our home anyway, or we're, you know, or current trends and things that, you know, are becoming more popular. For, for instance, at the shows, when we do our exhibitions, we have so many people talk to us about automated locks. Um, a way to let a delivery driver into the house without you actually having to be there. So a control system, which in this case is a control four system on a touchscreen, and a door entry system can, you know, make our door open. So someone would come up, press the door entry system. Um, we could either see them in the house or we could see them on our phone if we're not there. But the great thing is if, you know, let's say for instance, if you've got a porch on the front of your house, on your phone, you can go open door, the porch opens, the person leaves a package, shut that door. They can, you can then see that from the CCTV that your package is there, and you know, and that person shut the door behind them. You know, let's keep on with security. Intruder alarm, for instance. You know, lots of homes are having intruder alarms on them. But you know, once you start putting lots of things on the wall, you know, let's say by your front door, you've got your your thermostat for your underfloor heating. You know, your your touch screen, your your light switch, your uh, your uh, intruder alarm. It's all of a sudden gets really cramped, you know, wall acne as we call it. So your intruder alarm can talk to your touchscreen just like your door entry system can. So we can put your alarm in a cupboard, you know, just in case something happens to the, the technology system because, you know, technology is technology. Sometimes it does need rebooting. We're not going to lie. So, you know, but it means that when you leave the home, you could go up, touch your touchscreen and you can basically press the button and the alarm sets. So by the alarm setting, you know, that can also with a control system go, okay, so they set the alarm, they're leaving the house. Let's make sure all the TVs and all the audio is turned off. You know, uh, we work with a, a great company to do a smart water valve. So, you know, an hour after they've left the house, you know, shut the water off because that way, you know, dishwasher's finished or the washing machine's finished and we don't have any nasty surprises. Um, smoke and heat, for instance, we can build that into your home to, you know, remotely to, uh, let you know if something's happening or, or make something happen in the house to show you that there's a problem. Um, and then your exterior detection, um, you know, someone's on your property, it can tell you that someone's on your property. But just as a general rule of fact, you know, having a control system in means that, you know, some of the stuff we did over here, you know, like putting that TV in bedroom three, you know, making that audio work in the kitchen, that all can be worked off a control system. Um, at the end of this video, what I'll do is I'll, I will put a up close and personal view of the touchscreen because obviously it's, it's hard to see here how you can do it. Um, you can also go along to our website, justourpopcorn.co.uk or to someone like control4.com uh, who will give you some oversight on you know, the full on systems of control4 that we do. So you know, going back to our system over here, down the bottom you'll see intelligent lighting, wireless blinds. So, Okay, we've just left the house. You know, we've gone up to our touchscreen. We've 
we've done intruder alarm. Now let's just say we know we're going away for the day. You know, if the house is connected, we can do uh, infinite things with it. So we can basically say, okay, at sunset, if that person is not back in the house, turn on the lights, shut the curtains. You know, because you know you might have you know a south facing house, you know, with lovely big windows, but as soon as the lights come on, uh, they can see you're not at home. So you know, let's draw the blinds to create simulated occupancy. Uh, let's put the CCTV on the front of the house, which will trigger some because someone approaches the house or just, you know, be a general deterrent that, you, you know, that you are there even when you're not. Um, intelligent lighting, if we touch back on that. Um, intelligent lighting is great. Um, yes, I'm not gonna lie, it is, a, it is a, a big investment on a property over a conventional lighting, but, you know, especially when it comes to a new build, you're being asked what you want to do with lighting. Um, that's great, but if you've never lived in that house, how do you know that's what you want to happen? Um, and if it's wired like that, what's the chances of you being able to change your mind down the line? So a brief example on intelligent lighting is a single light above me here goes to a single switch on the wall there. Great. But what about if I want to work it in there in the cinema? Well, I can't. Well, yeah, that's because I haven't thought here. Uh, that's because I rent this place. Um, in your home, what we can do is we can take all your lighting circuits back to a central location, just like we would for a patch panel. We could take your light switches back to a central location, just like we would a patch panel. Then when you're in the property, we can program it so it's working for you. You know, we even program it so that the builders have a simple way of turning floors on and off or rooms on and off. But more importantly, as you live in that property, we can come back and we can change it and we can make adaptions to the to the programming so so you know how you want it so okay we've programmed it to work like this but you know with a service call we can now make it work like that um quite often on our projects you know we will go back in after a month and then after six months and do uh, updates free of charge for you in the first year um, because you know we understand that you're learning how to know the property you know you're not going to know from the get-go so the advantage with intelligent lighting, and here is the system we use by Philips Dynalight, uh, we also do systems by Lutron as well. Um, the advantage about Philips Dynalight is they have two different types of panel. They have one with a display on and one with not a display on. Um, the one with the display can do, I think it's up to 16 pages of six buttons. Um, and the other non-display buttons can do, you know, press and hold, you know, ramp ups and ramp downs. It can be programmed in infinite ways. The beautiful thing about these are is they're also your in-wall thermostat as well. So let's say you're having underfloor heating in your home and you know you want to get away from the fact that you've got a light switch and then you've got that thermostat next to it. Great, let's get rid of the thermostat and let's let this be the thermostat. You can't see them from where you are, but underneath here you have a thermostatic sensor, which means that basically on here I can go into my heating and I can ramp my heating up or down. I can go onto a web interface and I can program my heating the same as I would if I, on any conventional system. So come on at this time, go off at that time, you know, be at this temperature or be at that temperature. And, and obviously the beautiful thing about these are is that any of these buttons control any of these lights. So I can basically, if I go into my kitchen, I can turn off my kitchen. Yeah, I can go in at high. I can set it into ambient mode. Um, I can come into my living room, you know, I can adjust the lighting in my living room. And the beautiful thing is, this is all done with programming. So if I don't want that button to be ambient and I want it to be cooking, then it's just a case of just programming it and making it simple. So, you know, looking at the overall wall we have here, um, most important, again, the most important thing is this wall over here. Let's get the infrastructure in and let's get the house properly wired and connected for, for you to add bits and pieces to it. Um, let's look at the system that you're gonna have or the solutions you might want to have and let's make sure they all work together. You know, let's make sure that we can press a button as we leave the house, which makes sure everything's turned off. Yeah, or it sets the alarm or, you know, I, I have a daughter, she's lovely. She forgets to turn things off. So let's make sure that, you know, I can see that the TV in the playroom's turned off. You know, when I leave the house and press house off on the intelligent lighting system, it switches all the lights off in the house. How? Let's bring that all together. So as soon as I set the alarm from the house, it automatically put the house the house into a simulated occupancy mode. 
turns everything off, make sure everything's not wasting electricity. And if it's not deactivated by sunset, you know, let's start closing some blinds. Let's start, you know, turning some lights on just to make it look like someone's there. You know, let's put some CCTV on the house. Yes, you know, to catch if anything happens, but to deter to, to people from it not happening. So, you know, this all sounds great and it's probably a bit of a, you know, in your mind right now. I don't want to keep you too long in this video because uh, I don't want it going on for hours and hours because you won't watch it. Um, but it's really important if you are planning a new build or a renovation or any project at all, you know, a dedicated cinema room, um, anything like that, that you reach out to us. You know, go to Just Add Popcorn's website, www.justaddpopcorn.co.uk. Go to our immersivecinemarooms.co.uk website where we go more into cinema and media rooms. And let's plan our projects. You know, let's, let's not decide that we want a TV there once the house has been decorated. Let's not decide that, you know, we want to add something to our project, you know, once the house has been lived in for six months. Let's have a think about how we're going to run our infrastructure on a house and what we might want to add. You know, we can't future proof things. We don't believe in the word future proof because we know what's coming, you know, let's say for six months because a lot of these big companies are very secretive these days. But let's think, OK, what can we do now and what how has things happened previously? You know, a lot of the coaxial we have in our houses now for our aerial systems, a lot of that has been in them since the 80s, works perfectly fine now. So let's look at the infrastructure in our house. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you stick around, I'm going to tag a couple of videos onto the end of this, having a look at the touchscreen, and I'll take you into the cinema as well to, to show you our immersive cinema room. And as I say, you know, Go on the website, you know, give us a ring 01424 870 763. Uh, we have a showroom in the southeast of England, just outside Roberts Bridge on the A21. Um, you know, come down and see us, you know, bring your plans. We can come to you, you know, we can talk to your architect. But please, if you're going to get a builder in, if you're going to get an architect in, if you're going to get a plumber in, if you're going to get an electrician in, please get a technologist involved. You know, other trades do know technology, but we live technology. We live it every single day and we know what hopefully is going to be planned in the future. And that's really going to benefit you guys. So thanks for popping by and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Hi guys. Um, so for those of you who hung around or have watched the previous video of the demo wall, um, I just wanted to give you a brief oversight into what the GUI of a touchscreen looks like. So in this case, we're using a Control 4 system. Um, this is on our demo wall in our showroom in Robertsbridge. So this is a 10 inch on wall touchscreen. Um, basically, normally uh, you can have it when it's not being used like it is now to show the time and date, uh, maybe some pictures of some loved ones, uh, many, many different things. So first of all, if we wake it up, um, you see we're in our office. So this is where I am now. So in my office, you can see I have these things available. So for instance, if I go onto my watch up here, you can basically see in the here I have my Panasonic TV to watch, my, my normal Freeview Aerial on, um, my, um, my apps, my smart apps on my TV, or my Apple TV box. So if I basically press on my Apple TV box in the office, what will happen now is my TV will change over to the input that it should be on to watch Apple TV, and then I'll have Apple TV on the, the screen for it to, uh, to display. Um, I then can control my Apple TV via um, the on-screen touchscreen. I can control it via a handheld remote control, or I can have a portable screen like we see here, uh, which is the same sort of interface, uh, but can sit on my lap. Um, if I want to finish with my room, uh, I can then just power off, and then I can power down my room, and that will now turn everything off and take us back to a state where uh, we were before with this screen. If I go into listen, this is for my multi-room audio system. Um, so for instance here, you can see I've got my predetermined stations. I can add music. So if I go into add music here, you can see everything I can have as part of the system uh, at the moment. Uh, and I could just add that. So if I start using Deezer, I can add Deezer and add my subscription to it. If I go back here and I go into, let's say, my stations, um, this will list up two of the BBC radio stations. And if I play on BBC Radio 2, now what will happen is it will load BBC Radio 2. And 
as you can hear, that was playing Jeremy Vine on Radio 2. Um, I could also, if I wanted to, um, uh, add more zones. Um, so I have my office. Um, if I add more zones of audio on here, for instance, I could add some garden speakers or another room to create a multi-room audio effect. Uh, so let's just turn off that room um, and let's just go back to our uh, screen. This little screen you saw here is another way of us being able to quickly access the services in that room if we wanted to by pressing the control four button. Um, now let's get on to environmental. Uh, so shades, for instance. So if I click on my shades button, uh, we have a shade over the left here, uh, which is our front window. And basically by pressing that, that basically is now shutting. Uh, that's a great way to uh, keep light in and out if it's obviously a hot day, but it's also a great way to, you know, for security of the house. So again, if you watch the presentation that this is tied to, um, it's about simulated occupancy. So if I press my button again, that's now gonna go up. So we could actually make that do that from sunset and sunrise. So if you're on holiday, it just thinks that you're there or someone thinks that you're there. Um, if I come out of shades, um, I will quickly go over to the cinema. Um, so this is our demo cinema room. Because you'll see on here, I've also got lighting. Um, so like with blinds, we can simulate uh, occupancy or for our case here in the cinema, um, we can automate the lighting. So for instance, if I'm watching a film and I just want the lighting to come up 25%, I can have that as a preset scene. So, you know, I'm not dazzling myself. Likewise, if I come to cleaning, that now can turn everything on to 100% so I can clean and hoover the room. And we use that quite often when we're doing demonstrations. So if I come back out um, and go back to my office, let's say, uh, the next one on our list is comfort. So in here, we have no um, heating um, that is controlled. Uh, so we just get uh, weather updates. Um, comfort can be uh, if it's connected to your Nest thermostat, your heat miser system. Uh, so you can easily adjust your light, uh, so your heating from the touchscreen or, fr or from the remote control uh, whilst you're watching TV. Um, security. Um, security is where basically you'd have your alarm system. So um, if the alarm system in our office as part of our demo wall was a working system, we do have a working system in here, but it's monitored. So we don't have it as part of the display here because we, we turn this off to save electricity every night. Um, but for instance, if I go into locks and sensors, um, you can see there I have a motion sensor. Um, that is a motion sensor of the, touch, the doorbell, which is next to us. Um, that basically senses every time someone's walked past. So in this case, it's seeing that I'm in here and we can get that to trigger something. So you can say that, you know, if motion is detected in your garage, send an email or send a, send a snapshot of a CCTV camera. You know, that's another security measure. Uh, cameras, this will give you an insight into what our facilities look like here. Uh, so these are our cameras around here. So you can see the one here of my demo wall. Uh, excuse the mess behind me, I've got to tidy that part of the office up. Uh, but you can see here, this is another camera from the demo wall. That's outside the front entrance. That's another unit we have, and that's a picture of the cinema. But for instance, I could then click on that and make that a bigger picture. Um, and then that will then show you, you know, that's our doorbell outside here. So that's the view I see if someone rings the doorbell. Um, and it just means that you can keep an eye on your uh, property when you're about, uh, not about. The great thing about this Control 4 system, like a lot of other control systems, is that everything you see here is what you get on the app on your phone and the other devices. So you haven't got to switch between devices to see what's happening. You can actually, you know, it will actually show you what you're used to using. And then what a lot of our customers find really useful is intercom. So if you have, you know, touch screens around the house, uh, you have door stations around the house, uh, you can actually intercom between them. So for instance, if you have a touch screen up on the second floor, you know, and you want to shout out dinner's ready to everybody, or, you know, there's a parcel at the door or something like that, you can do this by basically, you know, uh, utilizing the system to, you know, um, call that, you know, the cinema room or to call the front door system um, or to call any of the portable touch screens. So Hopefully you can hear that. That's now written in the upper touchscreen, which is down by the side of us here. So I can hang up on that. And that way, 
you know, you don't have to open the door to somewhere and shout out your daughter's name like I do. Um, again, if we go back to our main system here, uh, up here, we have our rooms. So for instance, here we have the outside uh, front area where we have uh, some uh, garden speakers. So you can see here the screen has changed differently. We've just now got listen and security and intercom. Um, if you come into uh, our Amina room, this is uh, a room where we have an invisible speaker system. Uh, so this is how we will play back audio and the same with our Kef room where we have a Kef system where we will basically be able to play. Uh, also, we can store our favorites on there. So if we've got a playlist or a track we want to go to, we can go to easily. Uh, in our cinema, for instance, uh, it's based on what we've just had in here. Um, but you'll see if I go watch, uh, I've now got a lot more in there. I've got Kaleidoscape, our movie server. I've got Apple TV. I've got Xbox. I've got my 4K Blu-ray player. And I've also got Epson menu and Denon menu. So that's how I can easily access the menu for my projector and my amp, just in case I want to adjust some settings whilst I'm watching a film. Um, I'm going to do a short video of our demo room after this video, and I'll tag it onto the end of this video just to show you guys as well. Um, a great thing with uh, the... Um, systems is if I just pull you out here, uh, you'll see next to us here, uh, we have a door entry system. So for instance, if someone comes and rings your door entry system, that is now going to ring the front door. And if I stand in front of it, you will see that I'm here. And if we were to press this button here, we'd now be able to talk to each other. In this case, I'm going to hang up on myself. Um, so basically, we can use that for different solutions. Um, a little bit like our intruder alarm on the right hand side over here. Again, we can bring the intruder alarm into the touch screen. As we saw just a minute ago, you can bring your CCTV and your smoke detection into the touch screen. So having a control system in your house is a great way of basically just being able to bring everything together. Um, as I said before, um, it's just a great way of you being able to have one remote control, watch, then you know kaleidoscape and then that happens so i hope you found that useful um it's uh it's a, it can be done on a touch screen it can be done on a remote control uh, it can be done on many different devices including a lot of them you have in your pocket or your home so i hope you found that useful as i say um if you have any questions uh, email stuart at justadpopcorn.co.uk uh, go to our website justadpopcorn.co.uk or immersivecinemarooms.co.uk and, and i hope you found that useful thank you very much bye Hi guys, hope you're well. Um, we just wanted to shoot a brief video uh, following on from our other videos for uh, our virtual showroom tour. Um, this one being of our demo cinema room. So, you know, what is a cinema room? So cinema room is a bit like, you know, the sort type of cinema that you'd go to watch, you know, commercial cinema where you might go along with your friends and family, uh, but, but in your home. So you might have the advantage of creating a space in a converted garage or a basement, which, you know, is very much a, you know, cinema, no one door in, you know, uh, one door out, no windows, no, no treatment, you know, very dark, very immersive. Or you might not have that type of space in your home and you might want to plan a family room um, somewhere where you could have, you know, a TV by day, uh, a projector screen by night. So all of these elements are... Uh, doable and are easily creatable in most homes. Um, we quite often have people will turn around to us and say, I don't have room for a cinema in my home. You know, um, uh, I don't see the point of having a cinema. What can we play on a cinema? So, you know, for us, a, a cinema, a media room is creating a family space. So, you know, no different to what you would potentially have as a lounge in a house. Um, but somewhere you can go as a family, you can spend time as a family, you know, you can leave the gadgets outside, you know, let's say, for instance, you're lucky enough to have a basement cinema system. And, you know, and everybody's busy working, everybody's at school. And, you know, one day a week or one night a week, we can get together as a family and we can create experiences. We can watch what we want not necessarily what we're being told we have to watch by going to a commercial cinema. You know, we can, we can buy our own popcorn, we could drink our own wine, you know, we can enjoy the space and create memories and experiences as a family. So in this room, this was a converted office. Um, we opened it about six months ago. Um, it's roughly about four by five meters. 
and we've got uh, four seats in here, which uh, you're more than welcome to come down and uh, have a demo of yourself. Um, just to briefly go into you know, what we can do with a cinema room or a media room. So in this scenario, we have a fixed frame screen. Uh, you could have a drop down screen if it was in a lounge, let's say, and maybe a flat screen TV behind it. But in this room, we've got a 120 inch 21.9 screen. So it's a cinematic screen, which is why you're seeing black bars left and right. So what you're watching here is BBC iPlayer and you're getting your black bars left and right because we've set the system up to be more immersive for movies than normal TV. Now, if you turn around to me and say, hey, Stuart, you know, I want my room to be more for football. Or I want more to be, you know, watching Netflix or YouTube on, then fine. We will put a, you know, a traditional 16.9 screen in, uh, which in this scenario will go higher top or bottom. What you've just got to remember then is that when you're watching, you know, let's say you're watching football and you go to watching a movie, like on a TV, your screen will be different. You'll go to a smaller screen on your TV. So for instance here, um, as I said, our black bars are left and right. And if we go over to our movie system, uh, which is a movie server system we have in here called Kaleidoscape, um, what you'll basically notice is that the image on it, as all of a sudden you've got back black bars left and right and top and bottom. Well, you know, that's not what we want from a system. We want our system to be more immersive. So what we can do with modern projectors is we can do what we call lens shift. So now what you'll see is we're now moving the image into a, uh, uh, into a 21 9 or uh, 235 aspect ratio. This means now your image is filling the whole screen. So for instance, if I go into uh, a movie and just play a scene from the movie, you'll now see that that movie takes up the whole of the screen rather than just giving you, you know, a, a, a fraction of the screen with your black bars top and bottom. So this way, the room is more immersive and basically, you know, it feels like you're being enveloped by sound, enveloped by the picture as well. Now, if we go back to um, our graphic user interface, um, the advantage of having a, a, a system with all your movies uh, on a server is everything is here for you to basically be, you know, access whenever you want. There's no going back to a DVD player, flipping, flipping over discs, but we can go, you know, watch you know apple tv we can go watch sky um you know via our control system we can flip to whichever source we want i mean we've even got a removable panel down here which has got an xbox under there and sometimes we actually put a gaming chair in the front here and we can actually use a, a steering wheel and pedals on that to to you know utilize this not dead area but utilize this space at the beginning uh, of the room and likewise we know we quite often will have clients here who bring their kids along we can put some bean bags down and we can sit and watch a movie. We can do some demonstrations. Um, it really is about creating family spaces. This one thing we're really passionate about at Just Add Popcorn at Immersive Cinema Rooms is creating spaces where, you know, you spend time as a family, you know, creating memories, watching films, you know, one week dad picks, one week the daughter picks, and it's usually Frozen 2 in my case. Um, but yeah, you know, we just wanted to give you a brief insight you know, pop down, have a look. It's really hard to pull off this room on a video. Um, you've got to come down and, and really sort of experience this space for yourself. Um, and if you think this space and many other private cinemas are just like going to commercial cinema, I'm hoping you'll be pleasantly surprised because, you know, these rooms can be crafted and adapted to your taste and your style for your family, not just, you know, a one tick box for everybody type of solution. So, um, so yeah, reach out, um, give us a ring 01424 870 763 or drop us an email at stuart at just add uh, Pop along to the website immersive cinema rooms .uk, And yeah, hopefully one day we'll see you down here with your, with your family and uh, we can show you what we built for you. Thanks a lot. Bye.